In this video, I'm going to make a forge. I've made one previously, like 10 years ago, using um, some fiberboard that's used to line a kiln in um, a special type of glass wool. Um, but I just need something to heat up to bend some metal rod. So, uh, hence why I'm doing this project. So, I searched around on the internet and there's a few different variations on how you could do this. There's one you can use, um, I think, perlite or maybe vermiculti, something like that, where you can make your own refractory. I opted for a simpler refractory um, using plaster of Paris and sand. Anyways, um, I'm just going to talk about the body of the of the forge right now and all of this is a simple uh, coffee can. I put some bolts on it with some nuts, put those in, lock tight them in, and then a handle made out of aluminum, and that's it. That is the body. I poke the hole out in the bottom. That's going to be the exhaust or the back of the forge. And you don't have to do that. Um, I've seen some videos and websites where people leave that filled in, and then they just line the inside with the refractory material, and then they heat it up. Um, but because I want to be able to shove a rod all the way through, it makes it easier to have that opening. But you're going to lose some efficiency, obviously, that way, too. So, that is it for the body. Next, we're going to mix up some refractory. Um, basically, it will be plaster of Paris and one half plaster of Paris and one half, uh, I should say, one part plaster of Paris and one part uh, sand. Um, mix it together and then pour it in. I guess before we get to that, I should mention that I need something to be the chamber, the forge chamber. And I'm going to use this empty can of Raid. Um, it's about the right size that I want. You could use whatever piece of plastic, tubing, um, pipe, and as you can see, it just goes, it's going to be like that. So it what is going to happen? It's going to sit upright like that, and then the the can of uh, the can will sit right in the center here. And then I'm going to pour the material in. That's it. Simple as that. Next, mix up some material and pour it in. Okay, I have my refractory mix all combined. One part plaster of Paris, one part sand, um, just regular, I got some sand right there, a bag of it, um, <clears throat> and then the plaster of Paris, so one part, one to one ratio, and then I'm doing about almost a one to one ratio with water as well, so water right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it in and then start mixing it around and then I'm going to pour it into the forge and then let it set doesn't get any more straightforward than that so, so I'm going to pour this in I'm just going to start mixing it around just to see what it's like first I think I have only about 15 minutes to work with this. So, I'm going to put the camera down just so I can get mixing. Pouring it in.
I'm going to let this cure a bit, let it dry, and then I'm going to wipe it with a damp rag after about half an hour. At least that's what I saw in another video. Let's fix this up a little bit. Alrighty, let's let it set. You can see you got the pipe inside the there. Alrighty. Okay, it's only been about 10 minutes and the plaster's already starting to set up. So I'm just going to give this a nice wipe just to smooth out the front of it with a damp rag and clean up anything else. And then I'm going to pull, oops, I guess it wasn't in focus there, or it wasn't even in frame. I'm going to pull this can out now, hopefully I can get it out. Alrighty, here we go, one forge chamber, looks pretty good, just clean this up a little bit. It hasn't fully set yet, so i got to be careful and take out the torch head. Okay, I just want to mention real quick what I'm using for a burner. I'm going to use this burns matic Surefire TS-8000 torch. Um, I've used it for all kinds of things and it works awesome. So in this case, it produces enough BTU to heat up this uh, to red hot. What I'm going to do though, originally I was going to make my own torch and but I don't, I'm not going to bother now. I had used this piece of pipe in the earlier part of the video you saw that I used it just to make this hole. The reason is so that I could also add this insert so that this torch head sits in like that. So it's not sitting directly on the refractory. And this is just from a broom handle. This is a piece of steel. It just goes in right like that. Because this refractory, the wall is so thick, thick. I'm just going to add a little extension. It's not really required but I'm just adding it just to so that this torch head doesn't heat up too much. I want more of it out in the open air for cooling. Probably doesn't matter but just for safety I'm going to I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it 
So all this is is a half inch coupler. Hopefully, I got that in frame. Half inch coupler for a copper copper uh, pipe, and then it just goes in right like that. So I'll do a test firing, and uh, we'll be all done. Okay, I'm going to do a, a test fire. I have my torch. I have it connected up to a hose that goes to a 20-pound barbecue tank over here. I highly recommend one of these hoses. This was original. This hose was originally for a barbecue, I think. Okay, I'm gonna fire this up. Might have to adjust the focus.